Good morning. Welcome to Bite Size Bible. Today we're in Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah was a prophet God sent to the southern kingdom of Judah under the reign of Hezekiah and his predecessors. The first 39 chapters are pretty depressing as God says, I'm going to judge the sin of my people and send you into exile. And then in chapter 40, he speaks a word of comfort to his people as there will be a time when he restores them. Isaiah 53 looks forward to how God will restore his people as the servant figure who bears the sin of his people, who takes the punishment on their behalf. It is a wonderful picture, a wonderful description of the cross and what the Lord Jesus did. Let's read Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a, w a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressions. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Some wonderful words spoken centuries before the Lord Jesus came. Uh, speaking of him suffering in our place for our sins to bring us peace with our God. Let's pray. O Lord of grace, all your loving kindness is in your Son. I bring him to you in the arms of faith. I urge his saving name as the one who died for me. I plead his blood to pay my debts of wrong. Accept his worthiness for my unworthiness, his sinlessness for my transgressions, his purity for my uncleanness, his sincerity for my guile, his truth for my deceits, his meekness for my pride, his constancy for my backslidings, his love for my enmity, his fullness for my emptiness, his faithfulness for my treachery, his obedience for my lawlessness, his glory for my shame, his devotedness for my waywardness, his holy life for my unchaste ways, his righteousness for my dead works, his death for my life. Amen. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.